Thank you. Hello, <laughs> welcome everybody to the Usability Challenge presentation. Uh, it will be a lot of about usability and uh, open source. So I start with the open source part because uh, it's quite interesting and I have many slides. Um, so uh, then something about designing usable and desirable tools in general. Uh, definition of uh, UX and usability. Uh, how to learn more about users. Uh, then a quick look on the software development models with users in mind. Um, then bigger chapter about evaluating products usability, looking at some heuristics, testing approaches and compliance reviews. And uh, at the end, some pictures and visual design principles. Okay, so the software usability challenge. Sometimes it happens that software causes frustration and it causes stress to the users. It's surprising, but, it, but it's true. And um, uh, there is a quite frequently used term techno stress, and um, uh, the techno stress is uh, the negative connection generated between the human nature and the growing use of the computer technologies. There are many, many forms of techno stress. Uh, it uh, could have some physical impacts, it could have some uh, psychical impacts, it could have even some extreme forms. Uh, and uh, generally causes of the techno stress are usually uh, lack, of, lack, of, lack of education, uh, lack of training, lack of uh, communication about uh, what the software does, how it should be used. And uh, there are also the specific software and uh, hardware causes of of the techno stress. And uh, that's lack of uh, standardization, reliability, and uh, usability. So that's the challenge. Find, find the ultimate solution for the software which doesn't stress the users and doesn't frustrate them, um, the user friendly software. And we are still at the beginning. Okay, so the usability and, and the open source. So uh, the open source platform is best for everything. Um, gained reputation for reliability, efficiency, functionality. But uh, what about usability? Well, there are many success stories of uh, usable software built uh, on open source, starting with Apple, Android, known project, KDE, and so on. Uh, but in general, still the open source software is considered less usable uh, than the proprietary software. And um, uh, actually, let's turn back by 10 years. Uh, there was a great study conducted on this topic. And surprisingly, the results are still valid uh, today. Uh, so um, what's specific on the open source communities is that uh, the developers as main community contributors are not typical end users. So um, the software developed by developers for developers usually doesn't work for, uh, for the common user or the dummy user. And also from developer perspective, solving the usability problem is not usually a big rewarding experience because it doesn't involve any, any new technologies, algorithm, or anything really interesting. It's about uh, patience and a lot of, lot of iterations and taking the views. Um, another thing is that usability experts usually not get involved in community projects. Uh, this is definitely changing over time when uh, the, the community projects are united into, into the bigger projects like, like GNOME when there are usability experts and help the projects to mature. Uh, also the incentives of uh, open source software work better for improvement of functionality than usability. And uh, the usability problems are quite harder to specify and distribute than, than the functionality problems. Um, another thing is that design for the usability should uh, happen before, uh, the, before the other part. So uh, um, that's also not in favor of, of most of the projects which start with the coding. Uh, 
uh, to have something useful first and then look uh, how it could be also used, uh, sorry, have something useful first and look also how it could be usable later uh, and desirable at the end. Okay, and uh, probably open source software has even greater tendency towards a full blow than the commercial software. So, uh, some possible approaches, and uh, I think this is uh, one of the uh, better slides, and uh, I also I completely steal it from, from the study. Um, so, uh, there are multiple approaches how to uh, improve usability of the open source software, originally any software. Uh, those are not like the single approaches, it could be combined with each other and balanced to reach some optimal result. So um, one of the approach, uh, for example, the Apple, Apple approach, uh, partner with companies in uh, HCI development. Uh, HCI is a human computer interface. Uh, that could bring some benefits that the, the companies which have a good history and uh, good expertise in, in human computer interfaces can help with, with some projects. Uh, technical approaches. Uh, there is a way how to automate evaluate of, of various uh, various tools and also about the usability part so uh, there, there are uh, several web methods which could be used uh, there are several patterns like uh, which the patterns which show the bad design patterns the uh, uh, the other patterns which show like the uh, some uh, good good patterns so uh, it's possible to develop automation to check for these patterns. Uh, there are ma many or multiple tools for the for the web development, which can do quite complex usability analysis of the of the web pages. Uh, there are not so many tools for for the GUI or GUI applications, but um, um, definitely there are some possibilities there as well. Um, academic involvement. So there are two ways. Either the, uh, there are good experiences with uh, the academic uh, field leading usability studies, and uh, uh, the second piece uh, is participation uh, on the usability research. Um, there is always lack of users who are willing to spend their time on uh, giving back, giving something back to the. Uh, to the community, so the student participation can can help a lot extending the information about about the user base. Uh, the next one involving the end users. So one of the specific of the open source communities is that uh, the community contributors are um, mainly uh, the technically skilled people who just uh, are able to either develop or do do any kind of technical work to, to contribute and are able to log in into the forum, read emails and this kind of uncommon thing for uh, for the common people which are not so technically skilled. But uh, there are benefits of involving the end users and um, it, it could be done. Uh, the end users are otherwise passive in the open source project. So there are ways how to make them more active. Uh, there could be reporting tools within the applications uh, which will pop up in the moment when the user goes to the application and goes through some uncommon path which is not expected to be followed. So at that moment, the uh, some form, simple form could pop up and ask user or provide the feedback and that way the feedback could get back to the, to the engineer. Okay. So creating a usability discussion infrastructure. Um, from the lot of experience, Bugsla is not sufficient uh, because uh, the user reports are usually not bugs. Um, and uh, when the uh, usability kind of report are received, they need to be structured, analyzed, and discussed and act on. And uh, for this whole piece, Bugsla doesn't provide uh, uh, good enough infrastructure to, to have this complete. Uh, Another thing which could be done is fragmenting usability analysis and design. Uh, the open source projects are great in fragmenting the development, like uh, there are many pieces which are put together, like many, many people from 
uh, different IRFs can work together on, on one project. Um, so that's done on the code part. Something similar could be done on the usability part, but uh, the analysis and uh, is performed uh, on multiple pieces, on multiple levels, and the results could get together and form some, some solid basis for improvement. And uh, the last thing, education and evangelism. Uh, it's, it's good to know what's, what's usability, how to build a good user experience, and uh, how, to, how to design simple interfaces which, which work for the, for the user. Okay, so now some terms. Usability, usefulness, user experience, interaction design, user-centered design, visual design, human-computer interaction. Is it all the same or is it something different? Let's take a closer look. Useful, usable, and desirable. So, um, why do we need the tools? We usually need the tools because we would like to perform some tasks and uh, we are performing some tasks because we would like to reach some goals. So the tools which help us reach some goal we have, uh, we usually call useful. And uh, to have the tool usable, it first needs to be useful. Like if the tool is not usable, it doesn't doesn't make sense to talk about its usefulness. Um, the more uh, the tool useful is, the better it works and the more useful it is. Uh, the next state is desirable. We have the tool which is, which is pleasure to use, which is joy to use, and uh, which really help us reach our goal with pleasure. So we have the complete satisfaction of um, all this, all this process of uh, doing something with a tool and then reaching the final goal with success and um, uh, satisfaction. Okay, so uh, how to build uh, desirable tools? It works for the simple tools, it works for building a house, it works for designing a software, there is uh, not a significant difference. Uh, to build a complex tool, uh, it usually requires to have an uh, interdisciplinary team or at least good interdisciplinary mix of the skills. So for building a good and usable and useful software, it's beneficial to have uh, certain pieces and certain roles in the project. And the roles could be the information architecture, which focuses on uh, the structure and organization of the data, the interaction design, which focuses on the optimization, uh, the visual design, focusing on the aesthetic piece, and uh, the final tuning of the user interface, and the usability engineering, which uh, do independent evaluation of uh, how the other pieces are evolving uh, to reach the final state of some uh, nice piece of, uh, of the software or a nice tool. And uh, the UX design or UX designer or user experience architect, uh, this role con uh, conceives the whole experience of the users. Okay, so maybe now would be a good time to define what is user experience. So uh, the user experience is not only the first feeling we have when we, it's also not uh, the feeling uh, at the moment we use the certain tool, but uh, it's the full experience. So the, f the first time we learn about something or hear about something to the first touch and all, all the time we use it till the after experience, after we use the tool, uh, if it left any impact on us or our health or our, our feelings. So the user experience is like complete experience using something or using, using the tool or software. So let's try some example, uh, something which everyone knows. Um, and um, illustrate 
like the, the, the roles uh, of uh, the design, the roles in the design process. So um, let's say I would like to uh, live in some beautiful house in the mountains uh, when the sun is shining uh, the whole year and I have beautiful new couch to the, to the volley and I'd like to live together with my friends which will be in the neighborhood houses and have some animals and have a, uh, have a fridge with a beer behind every corner. So that's my strategy, that's my, that's my goal. And uh, starting with this, I can already start creating scope for my house. So I, I should be thinking like what task I, I will be performing in my, in my house. I, okay, so I, I will come by car and park it in the garage. I uh, would like to have some room for the children. So they will be not destroying the whole house, but just their own room. And uh, also I would like to have some place where I could invite friends and uh, have fun together. So that's some better, more, more fun and scope and some tasks I would like to do with my house. And now I can give it to the uh, architect and he start working on, on, on the house plan. So the first piece would be really to ensure that the house would support the task I, I need to be doing to reach my goals uh, or the goals the, ha the house has. So um, the architect would ensure that like uh, there is enough space for the car, that there are uh, spaces for, uh, for the uh, wardrobe, for the bedroom and, and so on. Okay, so we have the, the basic plan and the basic structure. So now the optimization, uh, optim optimization part comes uh, with the interaction design, uh, which helps to ensure that uh, each uh, little piece in the house would work well for the owner. And uh, the interaction design uh, would uh, work with the long history of experience of people, how they use the houses and uh, uh, how the human body works and uh, what is comfortable uh, for, for the humans on the body. Okay, so when we have some uh, optimization, we can go to the final experience and the visual design. So uh, the visual designer of the, of the computer uh, software uh, has a role similar to the interior designer of the house. So we're choosing the carpet, starting furniture, uh, everything uh, to keep in with character of the house when it's built, for which purpose it serves, and uh, to satisfy the homeowner's personal taste. Okay. The usability engineer. The usability engineer would check in each of the phases uh, of the structure, skeleton surface. So. Uh, creating the detailed, uh, detailed design. If uh, each piece is uh, still working for the house owner or if there are any discrepancies. Okay, so we have now the complete, uh, complete team and complete project. If everything goes well, we will have a really, really nice house which will uh, be happily accepted by the, uh, by the future owner. And uh, he should have really complete user experience from uh, the first moment when he entered the, the house till the last moment when he sell it on or when he decided to leave it. So the multiple roles, uh, is it necessary or should there be just one master architect uh, which would uh, design all of this? Possibly it can. Still the experience is that uh, usually the US architecture and uh, visual design are quite different style of thinking so it's good to divide these two because one is more about the art and one is really more about the science. And also as for the usability engineering, uh, this part sh should be uh, somehow independent on the air part. So uh, the results of the, um, of the usability checks and verification uh, is objective. So let's look at uh, some definition of the usability. Um, so the usability is extent to which a product can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. Uh, usually there are the five main attributes 
of, of the usability and uh, this by far the ease of learning, efficiency of use, memorability, error frequency and severity and the subjective satisfaction. Okay, so uh, looking at uh, the perspective of product quality, the product quality could be defined uh, or generally there are two ways how to understand the product quality. One way is objective and the objective means that uh, the uh, product should meet the defined requirements. And if it meets all the requirement, requirements, it's expected to have high quality. But there is also subjective view that the pro product uh, has high quality when uh, the users are satisfied and they have no issues with it. So sometimes these two views on the quality uh, could have strong tension or disbalance, especially in the cases when the requirements are not really well defined. So uh, the usability definitely fits into the into the product quality model and it should also reduce the tension between these two views on the quality, the subjective and the objective quality. Because if uh, we have overview about the usability, uh, satisfaction and user satisfaction, we could be sure that uh, the product doesn't meet just the functionality on uh, functional and non-functional requirements, but also the user requirements. So the requirements of the real users. Okay, so what to care specifically about usability. Uh, bring the cost of project down, okay. Uh, sometimes a lot improves user satisfaction a great deal. Could reduce frustration from the software. And also there is huge space for innovation. Um, and I have one example here. I hope the author of this tool is not in this room. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, we, we have some great application. Uh, it's apparently designed by developer for developers. So I believe, yeah, it, it could work for someone, but uh, it might not work for the common user. Uh, it's probably too complicated. It has too many options. It overhunts the user and uh, it's really hard to uh, understand the terms. So maybe that's one of the six uh, things which really should be fixed that it doesn't use the human understandable terms, but it use the computer terms. So, for example, the URL, that's the typical com computer term, should are used probably the, the address there, and same for for all the rest, which is almost all the rest, which is written there. Um, so what next? Uh, we should probably guide the new user to the application. Uh, if we offer him uh, 50, 50 fields he could update uh, at, uh, yeah, in parallel, it's really hard to start somewhere. Like we, sh we should provide probably some good guidance where to start, like which field we should update first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would be interesting to see what's the promote. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, then maybe the alignment, like we should probably align the things which make sense together. Uh, in this interface, it sort of seems that the, the options which uh, are somehow close to each other al aligned instead of aligning the things what the users might be willing to uh, use together. Okay, so. Where to start? Learn more about users. So we already talked about like uh, understanding the goals, tasks, uh, and then being able to uh, understand also the way how we can support those tasks with the tools and how to optimize it to the final experience. So um, it's helpful to understand how the users uh, would like to reach their goals, what tasks they really want to or need to perform. And uh, uh, to get this kind of information, we can, we can use several tools. Uh, quite a common tool is um, use case or user story. It's a uh, agile friendly requirement technique and it allows to describe either the interaction between the actor, 
so some general role in, in stem and the vault. So direction, the reaction of, uh, of uh, the tool or the vault environment. So that's one way how to describe the, the user story. And uh, the second type is uh, the uh, uh, kind of form when we name this, the specific user what he wants to perform and uh, don't forget to include what goal is he trying to achieve. So for example, I've, I have a goal that I would like to reach my life with at least one piece in my head. Uh, so uh, I'll try to reach the goal by performing some tasks. For example, I, I should vi probably visit a dentist at least once a year or better, better twice a year. Uh, I should be cleaning my tooth and I should be eating some healthy food and uh, I should be using some positive thinking about my teeth. So I seek a tools which help me to uh, better perform with my tasks. So uh, I can clean my teeth with generally anything, but it would be probably safer and um, uh, better to use the toothbrush, the toothpaste and, uh, and so on. So that's simple example and uh, it's important to understand the user goals and tasks for identifying the tools and features. And uh, the best way how to validate the tools is again performing the task with the tools and confirming that the user goals are really met. So gathering the information from users. So what we need to understand first is the user roles and the user profiles. So the part of the user role is, uh, so what, what is the user goal? Like what is his responsibilities like in the system or in, in his kind of work? Like what, what's his goal? Uh, when we have this understanding, then we can go deeper. Like uh, what kind of user it is like, what are the common uh, skills for this user? Computer skills, what's his domain expertise? Uh, what are his painful pain points, for example, in the current procedure or in the current tool he used? And uh, also how often he used the tools? Like does he use it just once a year uh, or does he use it uh, like a thousand times a day? So this is the kind of information which is worth collecting to have better knowledge of the users. And uh, the way how the information could be collected, there are many ways, but uh, one of the some of the possible ways is the usability testing, uh, for example, during the prototyping of the, of the software, uh, focus groups, uh, interviewing or observing users from the target group, uh, working with the expertise from customer support and uh, the key group, uh, getting the data from sales or marketing and uh, existing published research. Uh, the research can provide uh, good information about really the general users, for example, from the population, you know, that we are targeting users from this age to this age. We can, we can have very good data from some published researches or also for internationalization, like how the users for our tool differs in different countries and regions. So some software development models with, with in mind. And uh, for those who were on the previous presentation, I think it's great because uh, there was perfect coverage for what's uh, the continuous integration. So uh, this will be a really short overview uh, that there are uh, three common models, uh, the three well-known models uh, with the UX in mind. That's Java software development, which is like a basic form, let's say, and then the next two forms I have here are probably like the just uh, more specification of the, or the types of the agile software software development and is the design driven development and the user centered design. So some of the attributes of the agile software development which should lead to the uh, successful project ending is the iterative design. Uh, it's explained in the previous discussion, uh, a previous presentation, uh, the need for testing the ELE and testing often the need for test automation and the need for continuous uh, integration. So that these three goes together. Testing Kilian often having test automation to can test 
often and having the continuous continuous integration uh, to test the right right stuff when it's needed. So uh, the basic thinking behind the agile software development is that uh, it's important to focus on the individuals and their interaction then really the processes and the tools. So the user is in the center. Uh, working software over comprehensive documentation. So the software itself 